So hi, ladies, and welcome to today's session about how to get more people to read your post. Um, I know that a lot of people are struggling. We create lots of different content, and we're not always getting the results we're looking for. And yes, sometimes people don't read it. It doesn't mean that they're not like going to reach out to you when they need it. But we do want to improve engagement because improving engagement also going to help us to grow our profiles. And through that, of course, to increase exposure. And it's like a cycle, right? You increase the exposure, you improve the, the engagement, and they create a cycle of growing that business and growing it organically. So... For those of you who don't know me, so I'm Dana I'm from Israel. I relocated to South Africa actually almost eight years ago. It's going to be in March. And I do come from a marketing background, been working in corporates for many years. And that's why when you're going to hear and listen to today, like session and in general, my other sessions, I do combine the knowledge from working in corporate and doing marketing for big brands to the theoretical side from my degrees to the experience that I accumulated in the years that like um, I'm doing my own business and building a brand because there's one thing to build a brand that it's already like a brand that's been built and established for so many years versus to do it for yourself because uh, there's a lot of thinking behind it and there's a lot of work to do and we also tend to forget sometimes that even the big uh, companies like in corporate those big brands they're also reworking on this stuff. They're also actually redefining like key messages, their audience and everything. And that's something we also need to take and learn about our business. Um, so as a start, and this is like a rule that I want you to have always in mind. When you create content, you want to focus on really improving engagement. And for you to do that, you want to focus more on the shares, on the saves, on the website clicks and any type of other call to action like searching for your direction, for your email address, sending you a private message, all type of this. And as you can see, I actually done right here, the likes, okay? Because the likes is nice, but likes don't pay the bills eventually. We want them to engage. That's why we're doing this session about how to get more people to read our content, to read our posts and how to get the likes. Because likes, it's nice, but it's something that it's so easy to do, right? You take your phone, you scroll down, and that's it. It's very simple. But it doesn't mean that we really actually read your content. It just said like, oh, it's nice. Or maybe, oh, I know this person, so I'll give him a like. You want that extra. So how you basically create content which is going to help you to improve engagement. So first, it's something that I'm always going to say and always going to, I think, probably start my presentations it's about getting to know your audience. Knowing your audience means that you're going to know where to find them, how to engage with them, and when to engage with them. And that is why we constantly need to work on redefining our audience. Because what happens is that maybe we change. We decide to go in a different direction with our business. Or maybe our audience changed. Like Corona got like people to be more active online. And people are buying more stuff online. The behavior has changed. So there's always a movement. Even if we don't see that movement, there's always a movement. So to get to know your audience, you really want to know who they are and learn as much as you can about them. So even if at one point, for example, you decide to do uh, paid marketing, you cannot do paid marketing if you don't know your audience. Because how can you know, for example, which like criteria to put there to actually narrow it down to reach out to the right people. Because you don't want to work hard, maybe, on creating content and reels and videos on, and other stuff, but it's not going to speak to them. They're not going to understand what you're talking about. You don't want to waste your time and energies on the wrong things, on the wrong platform, on the wrong people. You want to work smart. You don't want to work hard. And yes, in the beginning, you work hard because you're working hard on your foundation, on building it and start to put your name out there. But once you do, it's going to start climbing up. That's why like, I always compare it to building a building, right? Like you work on the planning, you work on the foundations. Once it's solid and it's there, then the go up. It's so easy. It's simple. Even with surgery, we worked hard in the past on understanding and learning and technologies and stuff. And that's why there's always like 
it's evolve all the time. Okay, there's always innovation and you want to keep yourself up to date and make sure. And that's what I said in the beginning, even corporates, okay, um, working on redefining the audience because it's also like the company decide to focus on something else. Maybe a different audience will be more profitable for you. So learn as much as you can about them. For example, what they like to do maybe in the afternoon. Um, like, for example, like let's say you want an uh, audience that will invest money so you want to look at people that maybe fly a lot to overseas because it means that if you're flying, you do have money or maybe people that actually do gym and diets and into fitness because it means they're investing in themselves. And from that point of view, you really want to learn as much as you can about them. Also, learn about their challenges. What are their pain points, struggles? What are the things that nagging them, okay, that you have a solution for? Because you can with a solution because it was something that was nagging you. And that's how you came with a solution most of the time, right? So you want to understand them. What are they struggling with? And through that is like to understand like what are they experiencing and maybe what even type of emotions. And you're going to see in a bit why I speak about the emotions. But like what type of an emotion it triggers them? Are they frustrated? Are they exhausted? Are they like um, getting angry, getting like any type of emotion that they have, maybe excitement, all type of it, you want to know what it triggers in them that problem because you will see in a bit, you will want to focus on that in your message. And of course, which values, you know, they, you and them are going to share together because eventually people buy from people um, and you want to have that connection. You want to resonate with each other. It's not just you resonating with your audience or they resonating with you. It's both of you. Because what happens is if you reach out to the wrong audience, there is a gap. And it doesn't matter who's in the bottom and who's like up. Okay. There is a gap. And that gap causes frustration. And that frustration can actually damage our brand. Okay, we work so hard on building that brand and a brand is an ongoing project. It's not something we stop after a month or a year, but it's something that stays there. So it's easy to destroy something and then you need to work even harder on putting it back. So really focus on getting to know your audience and through that, define your key message which is going to focus on the problem. Okay, your key message needs to touch their pain points, their challenges. That's where you want to touch because... They experience something that doesn't make them feel good, but you've got the solution for it. And the, the key message, it's not the solution itself. It's actually that feeling, that emotion, okay? Whatever they go through, that that's why they eventually want to come to you. So choose the right content strategy. So now, as I said, like, you know your audience and you are deciding on your, like, a, and I have a definition for your key message, once you've got this two, you can actually move to the part of you choosing the right content strategy. And for here, I can divide them to like top four, okay? And I put it like this in a pie, but of course, it can be very different to each and every one of us. It can be a mix of all of them, or it can be just like two of them, only one of them. It's up to you to decide. And again, you want to have in your head, okay? What is my key message and what will package the best way my key message and will help me to connect with my audience? Okay, so when you look at this, so if I look at the content strategy, you have an educational one, which is the type of um, strategy that's going to help you to position yourself as an expert in your industry. And you want to do basically is to educate them, to teach them, to give them the tools Okay, so it can be tips, tricks, and different things like that. On the other hand, you have the inspirational and motivational, which is something that, for example, people will use different quotes, different stories, um, different like experiences that they're going through, like you went through, that your clients went through. So it's a type of mix. And that's something that also, for example, if you do coaching, so that will be nice. If, for example, for you, Hanika, like for you, like... Um, with even for the design and everything, right? You maybe want to inspire them to feel more light, to feel more colors. So you can also use different things like that. Um, so focus on like deciding which strategy will suit you. So as I said, there's educational, inspirational, motivational. There's also the personal connection that I think the personal connection, it's actually kind of a must 
that needs to go together with the educational and with the inspirational. Because as I said, people buy from people and you want them to get to know you. You want to create that personal connection. So you, for example, can share a story about yourself and through that to motivate them and inspire them. Or share a story about yourself, like I always share about things that wasn't working for me that easy from the beginning. Although I come from marketing with more than 13 years of experience, it doesn't mean that it's easy for me all the time. You know, there's a lot of learning around this. So you want to focus on like getting them to get to know you and build that connection. The next uh, content strategy is about lead generation. That that can be, for example, if you have an online shop or things like that, and you really want to just promote one thing, okay? You want to actually, uh, let's say, promote um, different webinars you're doing or different events. If you have events in your business or things like that, or like if you want to, um, let's say, want to have an email list. Not every business necessarily want to have an email list, but if you do a lead generation type of content strategy, it's also good. So as I said, you you can play with this pie as per what's right for you. And you can also say that as for now, because maybe I'm in the beginning, I want to do the educational and the personal connection. Once I'm going to start building that, I'm going to add the lead generation. And maybe for some of you, it will be different. And that's the nice thing. You can play with this. So if you remember, when I started, I spoke about knowing your audience and I asked to know not only what are the key challenges and like struggles, but also what type of emotional it triggers in them. And the reason for that is because in the past, people used to first think, then act, then feel, which means that I know my fridge is broken. That's the logic. I'm going to go buy it. And then I'll have a type of a feeling like, oh, does it blend nicely in my place? Does I like it? Does I not? Like you have different type of emotions around this. You know, even the excitement, like, oh my God, I got this new thing. But in the last, let's say even more than 10 years, it really changed and shifted. So people first feel, then they act and then they think, which means the easiest way to to explain it's like, uh, let's say with moms, right? The commercial always make them feel guilt. They don't speak necessarily like about like just the benefits of the product. Okay. That will be maybe one commercial, but it's always going to be packaged with other commercials that speaks about, are you a good mom? Are you doing the best as you can for your kid? Making her feel so much guilt that then she goes buy the product. And after she's buying the product, she's like, oh my God, was it the right decision? Am I actually a good mom? And like, even with Napis, right? She bought one brand and it's like, oh, it's not the right size for him. Like, oh, what am I going to do? The, like, it's all over now. But that's the thing. That's why when you want to look at your audience, you want to learn as much as you can about them and you want to learn about those emotions. So for example, I know that people that have a business, they really struggle with social media. And a lot, like one of the biggest emotions is their frustration. They're getting frustrated from the fact that like, what am I missing? Why other people are doing it? I'm doing pretty much the same, at least that's what I think, but I'm not getting the results. Okay. I remember when I started like my business and when you work in corporates, right, you have other people to do the stuff for you. Uh, and then, okay, now I need to do it by myself. And I couldn't understand how people say, oh my God, I'm generating leads from Instagram. I was like, okay, what am I missing? Okay. You ask yourself, you're getting frustrated, but it is doable. It's just to really learn how you work the right way. So as I said, you focus on your foundation, on knowing your target audience, on like having a clear key message that focus on the problem and not on the solution. Okay. We don't want to focus on the solution because people don't think first, they feel first. Okay, we became very emotional around this. And through that, you want to understand what of an emotion it triggers, because that's what you're going to speak about in your content. You want to make me feel something. Because if even like you make like a funny TikTok and you make me laugh, I don't have a job. You know, you will remember this. You will maybe want to do something similar. And that's the thing. Or if I'll share it, that like a sad story of something that happened to me. People automatically want to react. They want to feel part of that. So always have that in your mind. And as I said, like always remember, people buy from people. People buy from people they have a connection with, that they've built a relationship with. And if I build a relationship with you, it means I'm going to trust you. And if I'm going to trust you, I'm going to be loyal to your brand. 
and I'm going to be your best brand ambassador. And that's what you want because eventually you are building a community, a community around your brand. And again, it doesn't matter what you're selling. I can sell balloons and have a community of people that just love parties, that love to do things. Or like I can even create a community, build a community for events planners and do something fun for them like around this. So there's always something to do. And that's why it's really to work on like, who am I trying to reach out to so I can build a connection so they resonate with me and I resonate with them, that the gap between us is very like small and not big. So there is not going to be any frustration between. So you want to create, as I said, content that's going to help you to build relationship with your followers. You want them to maybe comment your stuff, share your stuff, save it. You want them to come to events or things you do. You want them to feel comfortable to reach out to you with questions. Maybe they're not sure. Or even, for example, let's say, Natalie, for you, when, when you do the nails, right? You want them to be able to come and feel comfortable to say, like, oh, listen, I'm not so happy with this. Like, or like, I want you to fix it. You want to have that relationship with them. Because if I come to you and I do it and I'm not happy, I'm not going to come back. It doesn't matter how beautiful your posts are. I'm not. So you want to work focus on that. You want to build a community. Look, uh, if you look at what COVID done, like I remember when I started my business just before COVID, literally like a year even before, and there were not enough communities, like groups on like Facebook for female entrepreneurs in South Africa. And out of nowhere, there's a lot of them now. And they keep on growing. We all want to be part of something. We all want to be part of a place that makes us feel comfortable, feel safe, want to feel com like, you know, uh, convenient to ask questions, to be ourselves, to maybe even like feel goofy, like or whatever it is, right? We want to have that place. And the same as we want to be part of that, a place like this, that's what our audience wants. So we just need to give it to them. So maybe they're not going to comment and save every type of post you have, but they will be there. And when they find the right thing, so maybe they're not going to comment, but they're going to message you. And any type of interaction that happens eventually on the different social media platforms help your profile to grow. So it's not just the comments that get you to actually get more people and increase exposure. Okay. So for example, on YouTube, it's the amount of views and also like the likes and dislikes that you get there. Um, on Pinterest, it's also like uh, the views you get and also like the saves of your pins, for example. So every platform works a bit differently. And that's why it's also important always to understand the different platforms. Uh, Dina, if you can actually write what you mean about reviews. Uh, let's have a try and then I'll <laughs> um, and work. As I mean, well. does it does it help to to push reviews from other older clients if they really liked your products? Ask them to come and put a review on Facebook and people can see you You are five-star or four-star or that so kind of thing. With reviews, the thing is that it needs to be very gentle, okay? So if you put testimonials and stuff, you don't want to make all your posts around this. So you can say that, let's say, in two, three weeks, you'll have like two, three of like testimonials or like even like one. Or like if you do it in a video, for example, I know it's very trendy now, to ask like a client to create a video, especially if you let say you've done an event or especially like Tracy, I'm not sure what your business is about. So you're more than welcome to type it down. So I can also give examples to you. Uh, but for example, Natalie, for you, like a review can be that someone took a picture of their nails and put it in the story and then you share it. So it's really depend on the type of reviews you get. Okay, so for someone like Nat Natalie with the nails or Hanukkah, when they got like their stuff, with all the cool designs and they put it out there. It's nice like to get a review that they share it in the story in the post and you share it as well on your account. But if you just put like a testimonial, you need to be very soft with us. Cause eventually I didn't came here for you to sell yourself. I came to build a relationship with you. I came to be part of your community. People don't like the oversells. If in the past people used to come knock on your door and sell you like a vacuum cleaner or like makeup and stuff like this, Today, when you go, for example, on LinkedIn, right? And people, you they want to connect and automatically you get a message for them trying to sell. How many of you are actually reading it? 
Most of the time, I don't even read it. Actually, like almost at all. I just like have like a quick read. I understand it's like something sell and I skip it. And people don't like it. That's why you want to be very soft with this. Like to do like a soft marketing and not a harsh marketing. So I hope I answered that. Um, and work on really establishing yourself and position yourself as an expert in what you do. You want to be the leader. You want to be the one that like, oh, like, I'll come for you for the design because you always like have cool stuff and up to date. Like you're for me, like the person or like if you're learning even like new like technologies of using and things like that. So it's for each and every one of us. It comes from that direction. Um, you're trying to launch an English adoring business. OK, so for even for you, like Tracy, you want to establish yourself as someone that really good with like English and have maybe maybe a fun or unique way of teaching English. And you want to put it out there. And then once you know your audience, you can decide how to tailor the message. Am I going like to different type of students, age groups, things like that? And through that, it will be easier to adjust. That's why, as you can see, you work on the big one and then it's getting narrower and narrower and narrower. And that's what helps you to get better results. So when you create content, really focus on having a clear structure. Okay. So always keep it short and simple. Less is more. Ask questions. It doesn't matter what your business is about. Ask questions. People, when they have, when they see a question, it doesn't matter if you ask the question on a video or it's on a post, they automatically answer the question. Either in their head or they type it down, but they answer the question. Even when I'm asking you now, it's not at every moment I ask a question here, right? And I tell you to raise your hand and let me know the answer. But you did answer it, right? So you can nod with your heads if you answer my, most of my questions. And I can see the nod. So that's what our audience is also doing. So ask questions to start a discussion. Because by also starting a discussion, you in, actually increasing exposure because you're showing the algorithm, okay, there's something interesting here. People are texting. People are writing like content. There's something here. So even for the English, like you can ask a question, what is the right way to say? Like even like I know I for sure have some English mistakes, uh, but again, English is not my first language, so I've got a good excuse, um, and I've got a different accent, but that's fine. You know, if you ask the question, I've got like a client that she teach um, Spanish, and she all the time asks which phrase is right, like how do you use it? So you always can use, for example, similar things, and once you ask, even if I don't have like, and I know Spanish, but I'm not that good with the typing, so a lot of them I'm answer here, sometimes I get the courage and I respond on the comments, okay? So it really works like this. Use strong headlines, bullet points. So if you write like something, don't just write it as a long story. People don't read long text, okay? They skip it, they skip with their eyes. So you put it in paragraph, you can put in bullet points, have a clear structure when you share tips or you share something that you want them to know, you want them to follow certain steps. Make it memorable. Use different elements, right, that are a part of your brand identity. You eventually want to be in top of mind. And in order for you to be in top of mind, you need to be repetitive with some of your elements. So, for example, I'm doing that with certain hashtags and certain words that I use, like the big brander that I put everywhere so it can get stuck in people's head. And when they hear it, they think about me. Like you use different colors, different quants, different things. It's like... um. For those who live in Cape Town, right, when you go from like uh, the art instead of uh, Bloberg side, you go to the closer to the N1 and just at the turn, there's a big sign commercial, I think for like ceramics or something like this. But the reason why it's so memorable, because they use the same font as memes, the same font that you'll find in most of the memes. So the moment I saw it, I was with my sister and she was visiting here. We took a picture because it was so funny. So you see, it's different things and elements that you can actually use that can help you to stand out and let them feel part of the story. Whenever, whatever you're making, always think about that. It's like, uh, let's say like Ansel and Greta, right? With the breadcrumbs, you're walking with them. You're helping them to get there. You're taking them hand by hand in the story. You need to remember people are exposed to so much content. If you're not going to make it very clear and easy for them and very accessible for them, they're going to skip it. That's why I've shared the other day, like in a podcast of mine about the tips, how to improve the bio. It's on Instagram. It's a limited space. You want to be very clear and take them and guide them and tell them what to do. 
People don't remember. We do so many things on the same time. And use strong images that really supports the message, but also stand out. So for example, um, don't put like a, let's say, I don't know, you speak about, no, I have no example and I had one before. Oh. Uh, but let's say you speak, for example, I don't know, like on a certain like uh, English word, but then you put a picture of something not related. If, you all, if you're using something that's not exactly related, it's because it's something that can really catch their eye and something that you can find a way um, to what you do. And yeah, for example, I've chosen mine uh, in the boxes because I felt like it's different. It's not a direct like thing to what I do, but if you being like my audience, you will think in a creative way and understand that it's like, not in the box, it's actually to think outside the box, to be creative, to do different things. And that's why, again, I go back to the knowing your audience, right? So thank you, Dina, for that example <laughs> of mine. Uh, but that's the thing. You want them to relate it to you. You want them to stick out. So if I'll, for example, put like, let's say, um, I'll create a post about standing out from the crowd or do something fun. I'll choose even a group of animals, like let's say white sheep, and I'll put a black sheep in between. So it's not exactly related, but it's something interesting that can link. So use a strong image, even for your Reels, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you ladies more than welcome to write as well on the different platform you are active on. But for example, the thumbnail on like YouTube, the cover image on Reels, you want them to link it to you, but also to stand out. That's why I put a picture of myself. And I create a certain design because I don't always have the feeling, like I barely sometimes have the feeling to get up and create a Reels or a TikTok. And I do both on the same day, like one after the other. So I use the different images, but I make them a bit bigger so they can stand out, okay? And, and I try to choose the right image that kind of describe the feeling that I'm trying to put it there. And as I said, less is more. Don't create designs with too much information, okay? When you're trying to put a message out there. Think about something that can package it, but something very minimal. Because what happens when there is a lot of elements and things around it, we lose focus. So if I had in my background now, let's say a library, some of you would might even try to read what type of books I have so you can learn about me, right? So you wanted to have it clean and clear. Because like for you, Anka, I look in the background, I can see the fridge, the cooler boxes, like the, I love the red fridge. See, there's too much things. So you're taking my attention to so many directions. And so you're laughing, but that's how it works with the audience. If we put like, I love it when people, what someone, uh, someone actually showed me the other day, a design they made um, for a studio here. And they're trying to promote, like, come to the studio and, like, look at the devices. And instead of explaining about the device, they put a slide like this with small fonts about the device. Now, who's going to stop and read it? Okay, no, none, none of us. You're not going to pause the screen and read it. You're going to skip it. But if someone would have actually explained, or there will be, like, five slides with different bullet points around it, I would actually stop and read it. Hey, or you can just make it blur in the background with the zoom. <laughs> but that's the thing. You want to actually think about it like this, okay? Because people are, it's like we already complete the words in our head sometimes when we read. So even as you said in like our word service without like the, as a, like the in the end, like you'll, you read it automatically. It doesn't matter that it was missing. We are doing that. So we want to make it easier for our audience to understand. Okay, I came here. I know exactly what I'm going to find. I like it or I don't like it. I like it, I'll stay. I don't, I'm going to skip. And that's a great way for you to eliminate the audience that is not right for you because you want to focus with the right audience. You prefer to have 100 people that love what you do versus to have, let's say, 10,000 people that kind of like it because they kind of are not going to like, not going to comment, not going to save, not going to share. And they're definitely not going to come to you to get your product or service. So you want to be very accurate. So the quantity, it's nice for the eyes, but to the bank account, it's not necessarily going to work for us, okay? We want to be very accurate. It's like compared to surgery. Use more short videos with your business. That's the trend of 2023 that came from 2022. 
It's still there. It's still out there. There's a reason why TikTok is still number one app for downloads. And now they do with CapCut, that collaboration, and now they jump as well. There's a reason why Instagram is investing in this and why YouTube added the YouTube shorts. And I can say that in 20, um, like 2022, I wasn't uploading too many long videos on my YouTube channel, but I had more than 50,000 views, actually more than that, like just by short videos, okay? So everyone is going in that direction. You want to put it out. You want to make it very light, very quick. And I'm going to give you now some content ideas to help you. But that's for short videos and in general. So do behind the scenes. So uh, Rionica, it's easy because it's like how you actually do the designs. Uh, Tracy, for you, for example, it can be how you actually prepare to the class, okay? When you're working maybe on a presentation or like a type of exercise that you do. So well, for you, Natalie, how you getting prep and like the choosing the colors and getting everything neat and clean. Then it's first for you, like what is the back office that you do? What are the projects you're working on? That's the part of it. Share, let them feel part of something, okay? Uh, I love to share like when I'm working on a new presentation and put it out there because I'm putting it in their head that this is something coming and they feel part of it. So you kind of create anticipation. Okay, I want to see when it's ready. Uh, another option is like for product benefits, okay? You can do that. You're not only going to speak about your products. So even if you have an online shop, you don't want to speak just about the products because you want to educate them as well. You want to establish yourself as an expert. So find that balance and put like uh, different videos or carousel, for example, on Instagram that is very strong. Um, you can put it like this, repost your audience content, okay? Of course, with their permission, but that's the testimonial side. If like they came and they enjoyed what they got from you, you can repost it, you can create content around that. You can create video of different testimonials you receive, educational videos of teaching them, content recycling. You can take all content that you created and find a way to do it in a different way. And the reason why I say do not copy paste is because I know a lot of time we tend to take something old or something from one platform and take it easy um, to just put it the same. If you look at my content, I always, even if it's the same type of title, it always different because I'll put like a one on Instagram, but it will be short bullet points. And then I can go live on it. And on LinkedIn, I'll post an article around it and I'll add more information to this. And when I record a podcast on that topic, I explain more and speak more about this and give more examples. So I use the same topic, right? But I did not copy paste it as it is. I just rephrase it and added more stuff and play with this. So you can do that as well because eventually you don't want to repeat the same content because if I'm following you in other places, why should I follow you there if I see the same thing over and over again? So you want to find that unique point in each and every one of them, right? Because it's like two circles. You have each part and you have the parts that kind of collapse together. So when I'm lazy and I admit it, and I do have days, especially when my hair is a bit grayish and I haven't done it, or when I haven't done my eyebrows yet and I don't like it, and I don't really like to use filters much because it's like not realistic for me, um, then I don't do it. But then I can take from TikTok and move it to Instagram or I can do the other way around. So that's okay to do it here and there, but not constantly. Um, content ideas, questions. Uh, you say so Instagram and Facebook should not get the same post. I would say they can get the same post, but still in each and every one of them, find some one or two things that are different. Okay. So there will be things that you won't do on, on the other one or like on the uh, first one. Ask questions. Um, so put questions to start a discussion. That can be just a kind of idea itself. Just put a one frame with a question. Get people to interact, start a discussion. And of course, timely videos that, for example, Valentine is next week. So to do things around that, around the different subjects. Use trends to increase your exposure, but on the same time, stay unique. So the fact that like, uh, let's say on TikTok, there was a trend of a Titanic thing with the boat. It's a fun trend, but it doesn't mean that it's right for me. So I didn't follow it. 
but then I'll find something else. Like there was something like waiting on the phone and I've linked it like to me waiting for the right audience to come to me. You know, so find a way to make it unique and choose the right trends. As well, trends are not just like the type of like, let's say, uh, filters or audio. It's also topics. Okay, so choose the topics that may be relevant. Okay, like something that like, uh, let's say, um, Emily in Paris, right? When it first started, it was very trendy. And a lot of people are talking about the TV series regarding social media. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, wait, I'll have a sip. Me with my coconut water. Sorry. Um, so like when it was trendy, then you were talking about it, but you could have speak about it, but find a unique way to speak about it, like a different point of view. So you want to balance because the algorithm likes um, trends, but it also likes unique content. And that's why you want to balance it too. Okay. Bless you. Oh. <laughs> that's what happens when you speak a lot. Okay, but we're getting there. We're almost done. Uh, always had a call to action. And a call to action is not just book a session with me or do something with me. It's to ask them to comment. Uh, I like to ask sometimes to comment with the hashtag big yes, okay? Because to get that moving, um, ask them to share it, to save, to check your website, to watch your video, to listen to your podcast, um, to follow you on other platforms, uh, to subscribe to your newsletter, whatever thing there is, ask them, guide them. That's why I even said on my podcast about the bio, lead to action. Tell them in your bio something to do. Okay, we're getting lazy. So nice, I read your post and now someone spoke with me. I forgot. But if while I'm reading the post, you're telling me to do something, I probably will do it. Okay, if I'm interested. So always lead to action. And then, of course, always listen to your audience. Um, like, for example, like your audience will tell you everything. So, Because as I said in the beginning, you want to speak their language. You want to speak about the problem and not on the solution. So they, because they will tell you everything you need to know. They'll tell you who they are, uh, what type of content they like or not. They're going to tell you what are they struggling with. And that's why, for example, you can ask questions, okay? So I've actually asked a question and through that question, I knew which session they will prefer better. Okay, you interact. They, they just tell me what to do. I already know what's the next session gonna be in two weeks or now, because they already told me they prioritize it. And that's a way to communicate, because now, even if they couldn't join today, there's gonna be a recording and they can watch it after, but they'll remember that I've listened. And that's how you build that relationship and that connection. Um, you want to, it's also by listening to them, they're going to engage with you more because they, they know you see them. Okay. No one wants to think like, okay, like there's no one behind it. Like what's happening? Like no one cares. That's why if they comment you, if they are, um, sending you a message, don't take too long to respond. Be quick to respond. Do it. And it's fine. Sometimes it takes longer, but be there. Don't disappear for a week. That's the consistency. That's one of the most important things when building a brand, when using social media, it's to be consistent, to put yourself out there, to build that relationship with them, to build that connection. Because as I said, by building that strong connection, that's how you're going to build a brand. Because to build a brand, you need them to trust you. And they cannot trust you if they don't have a relationship with you, if they don't feel comfortable to reach out with any question, with any request. Okay, so even like I'll take it from a different example here, like it's when you go to do the two, right? You want to be able to feel comfortable to say to that person, to do the two artists, I don't want it like this, I don't want to decide. You want it to have someone, maybe if you're not a quick to decide, you want to have someone be patient, right? Because it's something you're going to get stuck with. So you're building that relationship. You're not going to go to someone just because it's cheap, right? You're going to go to someone that can actually help you. And those are the relationships we're trying to build. So your audience will tell you everything. That is why after you posting, always, always, always check your insight, check your analytics. It doesn't matter which platform you use. You want to see. I always check like even after each and every post and after every video, but then every few weeks or like a month, 
I'll open and I'll see my top rules, uh, my top videos on my YouTube channel. I'll check it out and then I'll see, okay, this was working, this was not. This I need to replicate, this one I need to stop doing, okay? You wanna do that, you wanna check because they tell you everything. It's like a, it's like the saying, like how people say, like uh, what they think about, like things that happening, let's say in the supermarket, they walk with, they vote with their legs, right? There's the saying, vote with your legs. That's what they do. And they just do it online. And it's okay that they're not always commenting on your content. That's why the session is not how to get more comments. It's actually how to get more people to read your content because they might read it and not respond to you yet. But they might read it and either comment, say, share it. They might read it and then after two weeks, they will come and reach out to you and say, like, I think, like, even for you, Hanukkah, right? You're not always, like, liked and comment my stuff. But me being consistent and putting myself out there, you know, you can feel comfortable to come and ask and you join here and you join there. And that's the thing. When you re when people are ready, they come to you. And you want them to come when they're ready. So, for example, if someone is doing coaching, you don't want to do coaching to someone that is not ready, even me with my consultation. I don't want to work with someone that is like not sure about what they want. It's going to be a waste of time and money. And I'll get frustrated as well because for me, you would not get the results they're looking for. So it's like basically destroying for the two of us. So you want to make sure that your audience is coming at the right time. So you want to be consistent with the type of content. And if I'll sum it all up quickly, really get to know your audience who they are, learn as much as you can about them, learn about what is the uh, trigger, like what it triggers um, their, like what emotion they, like the problem is triggering with them. You want to speak about this. You want to have that as a key message, right? Because the key message needs to be around the problem. You, we don't speak about the solution. We don't have hard sell anymore, okay? It's soft. We're building relationship. And that's a huge shift in your in like how you're gonna actually get more people. You wanna make sure you're connecting with the right people at the right places, okay? You wanna create content that's relevant for them. Have a clear structure. Remember, less is more. It's not all about the different shapes and colors or like putting all the information. It's like, it's like when you study to exam and you just wanna kind of puke like everything you study and just put it out there without connection to what they ask in the exam. It doesn't work like that. We need to be the, with a clear structure. We want to ask questions, okay? Questions that start a discussion. And they ask them even like, um, I think even like for you, Natalie, for Renika, like you can ask questions, which design or which color you like the most? Or like now you're getting, we're getting like to the end of summer. What are the last colors you would want to see on your fingers for the last one? Or which design you like it? Do you like it clean? Do you like it this? Which shape? Ask, interact with them. If you're going to keep on like interacting and trying to get them to do something, that's the call to action. If you're going to get them to do something, there's a better chance of them coming to you and doing it. Okay. So this was this. 